This video is a little US centric, but it's a great opportunity to show human rights in action. I'm going to be talking about the recent case where the US Fourth Circuit said that Trump's travel ban is unconstitutional for its targeting of Muslims. So let's get into this case. First, let's get into the background, which I'm sure pretty much all of you have heard at least a little bit of what's going on. Uh, in case you haven't, there's this guy called Trump. He's the US president. And he said some things about Muslims being able to enter the United States. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. Then, on January 27, 2017, Trump issued an executive order which banned people from certain countries from being able to travel into the United States for a period of time. The order didn't say anything about Muslims, but it only targeted countries that were Muslim majority. Further, the order had an out for people of a minority religion that they could still come into the US. Now, for these Muslim majority countries, what's gonna be a minority religion? Christianity. This order was blocked by a federal judge saying that it was unconstitutional. Now, Trump was angry about that, but he did not appeal that. Instead, he issued a more measured executive order that was uh, more focused. It targeted less countries and it removed the religious minority aspect. But that ban was also blocked by federal court. And this time, Trump did appeal. Now, for a federal judge to say something you're doing is unconstitutional is a big deal. But ultimately, it's just one judge. But then on May 25th, an appellate court also decided that the ban was unconstitutional. The full Fourth Circuit of the United States reviewed the case, and 11 judges cited against the ban, with only three saying that the ban was legal. This is a big deal. So how is the ban unconstitutional? Well, it all comes down to rights. Generally, the US president has broad discretion to decide immigration policy for the whole country, but those powers are limited by certain things, one of those things being the US Constitution. In this case, what we're talking about is the Bill of Rights, or one particular right, the First Amendment. The Establishment Clause of the First Amendment says that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It's basically the freedom of religion, human right, just worded in a little more old-timey type of way. Well, the order didn't say anything about Muslims, so why are we even talking about Muslims? That's because Trump, both during the campaign and afterwards, made a number of statements regarding a Muslim ban. That literally means anyone of a certain religion, in this case Muslims, would not be allowed into the country. It's a test based on religion. This is a clear example of discrimination. But that's what Trump said at random events. That's not what's in the executive order. Again, the executive order never says Muslim ban. But it doesn't have to. What the court said is that if the order was passed in bad faith, they're allowed to investigate further than just the text of the executive order. And what they did is they looked at all the times Trump said Muslim ban, the first executive order, which had the religious minority aspect, and now this revised executive order. And they showed a connection between all of them, which would imply that the national security reason given as the justification for the revised executive order was actually just a pretext. That means it was not the real reason it was issued. In fact, because Trump had said so many times that he was gonna issue a ban based on religion, the court felt comfortable taking him on his word and reading that into the executive order. That call for a complete shutdown wasn't just a one-off speech. Trump's campaign page had the exact same thing. After the majority of the court decided that the national security justification was a pretext, they then looked to see what the real intent was and whether it was based on religion. And they decided that yes, it was based on religion and therefore it would become a violation of one's freedom of religion because it's discriminating based on religion or in, in the words of the US Constitution, violating the establishment clause of the First Amendment. Of the 13 judges, nine found that it was unconstitutional three found that it was not unconstitutional, and then one never reviewed the constitutionality aspect. But this loss for Trump isn't the end of the story. Trump can appeal this to the Supreme Court. And on June 2nd, Trump did ask the Supreme Court to reinstate the ban. And at that point, who knows how they're gonna decide. 
That's it for now. I hope you liked this video on current events. I plan on making more videos of this style now that Inside Human Rights has covered a lot of the fundamental basics of human rights. Well, let me know in the comments your thoughts on the court case, this video, and how you think human rights should have played out in it. And as always, if you like this video, click subscribe for more from Inside Human Rights.